Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to my August beauty roundup where I'm going to be sharing all of my faves, fails, updates and everything in between. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first up, something I haven't spoken about yet, but this is the new BK Beauty makeup slash makeup brush bag, storage component organizer that is this. So this was sent to me in PR and I, it was one of those things that I saw it was coming and I thought, I'm not going to really use it because I didn't really understand what it was. And I also thought it was going to be a lot bigger than this. So I, when it first arrived and I got it out and I saw it was this nice compact size, because you guys know me, when I travel, whether it's for a weekend or holiday, whatever it is, I take the most minimal amount of makeup. I know that might surprise some of you, but I pack very, very light when it comes to makeup and brushes. I take a really small amount. So I don't want like a giant big makeup case. And I thought this was going to be like at least two or three times this size. It's so nice and compact and it's genius. It's genius, okay? It's so clever. So you look at it and you think, oh yeah, okay, it's a nice little makeup bag. It's beautifully like waterproof and like white proof inside, which I love because spillages, makeup, messy, you know? But it's a nice little compact size. However, the magic comes here. Pardon you. So you can either use it like that, squish down and just have a small makeup bag. You can extend it and have a much larger one. But what this is actually designed to do is give you like a makeup brush holder as well as the makeup bag. So you can put your brushes in there and it will be, you know, the long size so that they don't get squashed, they don't get the bristles smushed. And then when you come to use them, you squash it down and they will all be sat upright nicely for you to pluck out and use. I mean, genius. I'm in love with it. I haven't taken it anywhere yet because I haven't been anywhere, but wait till I do. It's coming with me. What a great idea. Love it. I love a new idea. It's very tricky with makeup and beauty in general these days. When I see innovation and a brand new idea that solves a problem <sighs> i just can't get enough by the way i'm absolutely starving because i forgot to make my chia pudding last night so i haven't eaten anything yet i have a very large coffee but it's not really stopping my tummy rumbling so you're gonna hear that <laughs> i'm so sorry now next up Tatcha sent me across their body stuff this month so i have the body wash which <sighs> I mean, it's delightful, but it is a shower gel. It's also full of water for some reason, and it's literally pouring all over me. <sighs> the scent of all of these products is unbelievable. Okay, if we had smell vision which I fully am confident we were told we were gonna have years ago, but it's still not here. Let me tell you, you'd think you were at the spa. So the body wash I like, it's a body wash, so I don't know that I can get super excited about it. It's a really nice light foam, it's got a glorious spa-like smell, but that's about where my love affair ends because it's it's a shower gel. It's not that exciting. But these, <gasps> so this is the body milk and the body oil, the Hinoki body milk and body oil. For a start, this packaging, I mean, I just, on my shelf, it looks glorious. It makes my heart sing. I'm happy about it. I walk into my bathroom, I see these products on the shelf, Oh, yes, please. Looks like a spa. You know, it's gorgeous. The wooden caps, it's very luxurious. It feels very heavy, as it should for the price point. The scent of these, again, like the shower gel, glorious spa. I'm a big fan of the body milk. I haven't actually moisturized. By the way, <laughs> I had a blood test last week, okay? And this is not a good look for me. But this body milk is so lovely and light. It feels incredibly hydrating, but it is literally gone into the skin in three seconds flat time. One, two, three. It might have been four, okay, five, 
six. Okay, I've lied. It was six seconds, but you get the idea. It was very, very quick to go into the skin. So light, never greasy. I'm in love. I don't want to repurchase these because they're very expensive, especially for body products, which I typically don't spend a lot of money on, but I'm going to have to because this is like probably one of my favorite ever body moisturizers. It smells incredible. It feels delightful. I love it. The oil, now I'm not really an oil girl, okay? I don't really like oil on the bod because I just think it doesn't feel, it feels oily and greasy, you know, and slimy. But let me show you this body oil. It gives a lovely, luxurious sheen to the skin, but it doesn't feel super greasy and it doesn't stay sticky. And again, it dissolves, it goes away into the skin, it melts in without staying on top, staying sticky, making your hand that you use to apply it feel greasy and sticky and they all have that stunning scent. So yeah, I'm not really an oil girl, but the body milk, I would absolutely repurchase this because I've really loved it. And the bottles, <gasps> I'm going to be keeping those long after they are used up. So one more sort of skincare-y type product and it's the new Charlotte Tilbury magic water cream <laughs> almost the magic water cream so this is charlotte tilbury's lighter fragrance free version of her magic cream apparently a lot of requests from her customers for a fragrance free version of the magic cream because lots of people don't and can't and won't tolerate fragrance in products so it also doesn't smell unpleasant. I think sometimes fragrance free for someone who's not sensitive to fragrance is like, mm, it's a bummer because I, I want the fragrance. I like it. A light, lovely fragrance. I don't mean I want to not be able to breathe because of perfume, but just a nice, you know, skincare scent. This literally smells like nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's giving me no smell, no scent, nothing unpleasant and nothing pleasant. It's just, there is zero scent. You get it. I can't smell a thing. It's so light and fresh and hydrating. I love that everything is refillable from Charlotte Tilbury. This I definitely prefer to the original Magic Cream because it's just so much lighter and better for before makeup. If you don't have an hour for your skincare to soak in before you have to do makeup, I just find that one is so light and it's absorbed really nice and quickly into the skin without sacrificing how hydrating it is. I've really been loving it. It's definitely my favorite from Charlotte Tilbury. I love the lightness. It's just delightful. One hair care product that I thought I would share with you this month that I tried, and it's the Color Wow Pop and Lock. I got sucked in again to another TikTok purchase because I've been doing a lot of slicked back hairstyles, whether it's a slicked back plait or a slicked back pony or a slicked back bun. I love a slicked back throughout summer okay I cannot stand hair being like all down my back or on the back of my neck during hot summer months I can't be doing with it so usually or prior to this coming into my life I have been using either gel to get everything you know it's nice and slick back or the little TG wax stick this is my new favorite I love it so much I think it's actually designed to be like a sort of well it's a heat protectant but it's also like a styling sort of serum type feel and it's supposed to make everything really glossy and shiny you can apply it to damp hair and then blow dry and it gives you the heat protectant but also shinier finish for me i've been using this basically as a finishing touch to a slick back look so today i did a slick back pony and you know i combed everything put in the ponytail and then i just take a pump of this on my hands and smooth it over and it gets rid of all flyaways and it's like i've gelled or waxed it back but the benefit over the wax is that it's shiny so it doesn't give you that matte finish that just looks like you've literally waxed back your hair and it's not crispy like a gel it stays soft and smooth and it looks it but it's super shiny i really like it and it smells delightful which is always a bonus when it comes to hair because i just want to smell like a goddess from the toppiest tippiest hair on my head to the last toe on my foot. I want to smell glorious, amalgamation of 58 different glorious scents. So, you know, that's an extra one, perfect. Speaking of fragrance, my fragrance of the month this month was Montal's Infinity. <laughs> it's not that I'm disappointed because it smells beautiful. It's such a beautiful fragrance. It's a sort of fruity, sweet, warm, spicy, 
little number. <laughs> Top notes are black cherry, plum, saffron, pink pepper, and cardamom, and it definitely has that sort of fruity opening with that little sort of fresh air quality coming from the saffron. The middle notes are very woody, and you definitely get a bit of that oud coming through in the middle notes. I absolutely noticed that little hint of oud, but it's not too much. And then the base is tobacco, amber, vanilla, sugar, tonka, and musk. All of these notes are right up my street. I think it's a beautiful fragrance. I enjoy it from the first moment it's on my skin all the way through the scent journey. The one, the one issue is it just does not perform well on me. It's a definite like office appropriate fragrance, somewhere where you don't want to overwhelm anybody with your scent, it's ideal, but it is very close to the skin. I think it's long wearing enough. It's just that it's very close to the skin to the point where I can almost like not smell it on myself. You know, if I spray my wrist, I'm really having to get in there to smell it, even like once it's just freshly applied, which is such a shame because it really doesn't matter how beautiful a fragrance is if you can't smell it and no one else can either you know so that was disappointing i love these bottles from montar they're very travel friendly perhaps i would take it on holiday with me because you know really hot sun in the summer will help a fragrance project a little more but you know it's been warm here and it's it's not really helped it that much okay so quite disappointing because i think the fragrance is stunning but without the performance what does it matter you know? However, I will say I got a free little mini size of Arabian's Tonka from Montar with my order because I ordered directly from their website and it's so beautiful. This is right up my street as a fragrance. You know, it has saffron in the top notes, it's got oud and rose in the middle and then the base is like a bit of me. Tonka bean, sugarcane, amber, white musk, oak moss. It's beautiful. I knew it would be. It's definitely been one that I have had my eye on and thought I know I would like that and I do and it performs a lot better than Infinity does on me. I don't think I would purchase the full size of this because it is very similar to lots of fragrances I already own so it feels unnecessary to my collection but if you're looking for a new Montar fragrance, don't get this one, get this one. You know, if you like Baccarat Rouge, if you like Instant Crush from Mancera, they are all definitely from the same sort of family as I own those and more that are in that same sort of scent category. I don't need a full size of it, but if you like all those type of fragrances, you're looking for something from Montar, it's a little easier on the wallet. That is beautiful and it performed much better than Infinity does. Okay, one last thing before we move on to the makeups. This little tool, this is a little eyelash comb, eyelash brush. Okay, you see, very spiky. Proceed with caution, be careful, okay? Don't poke it in your eyeball. It won't go well. It will probably come right out and you'll have like a popsicle with your eye. I don't know why I said that, that's awful. I'm so sorry. What a lovely image from Monday. But this is not in fact some kind of medieval torture device. This is in fact a lash comb and it's life changing, okay? I used the Huda Beauty Wow One Coat Wow Mascara, which I like, but it is that really heavy, thick, clumpy, full volume lash mascara and sometimes it can go awry. It can be too clumpy, too thick, too heavy and take this little number and just comb or blink through your lashes everything separated clumps we don't know them who are they they're not welcome here and it's just amazing i mean even with a mascara that isn't as heavy and thick and clumpy and voluminous as that one can benefit from that because it just stops your lashes all being stuck together which a lot of mascaras do to give you that volume you can just separate through and it gives you more lashes for your money it's a game changer i can't remember exactly the name of this one but i will link it in my description box it's if you haven't tried lash comb get on board join me in this journey Okay, so moving on to the makeup. First up, this by Ellie Brow Shape. Another TikTok suggestion. Another time that I got lured in to a product that went viral on TikTok. But another one that actually paid off and worked gloriously for me, okay? So this is like one of those little pomades. So it has that sort of clear wax and then the little well in the middle and you stick your spoolie in the middle, give it a swirl and then apply. So what I love about this one, it is my new favorite, spoiler alert, I definitely prefer this 
to the honey one that I was previously using and I'll tell you for why. No flaking white residue left on the brows, that's number one. It also really like actually glues them down, like these are not going anywhere. I wore this when I went to the hot air balloon festival at the weekend and it was a crazy classic British day where there was like thunderstorms and pouring rain and then it was gloriously hot and sunny and then we were sweating and I was there for like 12 hours my eyebrows did not move I've seen people on TikTok like rubbing in fact let's let's rub I'm scared I'm not going to do it I mean I'll do it gently I just don't want to like upset or ruin or like pull out a brow I got as few as I could possibly cope with they don't move they feel nice and sort of soft and smooth but they are literally like glued into position it's amazing the one thing i one tip i will fill you guys in on if this if you've tried this and it doesn't work for you is be careful with your skincare it doesn't like skincare when i first used this the first couple of times i was so confused because it wasn't doing what i'd seen it do for everybody else basically when i was applying it it was going all like sort of greasy and it just wasn't sticking the hairs to my skin. And then someone, I saw someone talking about how, you know, do this before skincare. I can't do that, okay? I'm, I'm old, I'm set in my ways. Old dog, new tricks, all that jazz. I can't do that. I have to do my skincare first. I want to, that's how I live, okay? That's how I live my life. I can't be changing it now. So what I do is just in the mornings, serum and moisturizer, I just keep it, you know, a few centimeters clear of the eyebrows, okay? All of my active skincare goes in the evening anyway. My morning skincare is really there to wake the face up and hydrate me and moisturize me and or give me SPF for the day. So I just keep everything just clear of the eyebrows by a smidge and then it works like an utter dream. I don't need to wet my brush or spray it to activate it. It's amazing, it keeps my brows exactly wherever I put them until I take it off. It's the best I've ever tried. So there. Okay, so we had a few eyeshadow palettes this month, starting off with uh, McGrath Mothership. Is it 11? I believe so. Mothership 11. Sunlit Seduction. I, you know, I can't remember the names of things. All right, give me a break. I know this was highly controversial. I know people really wanted everybody to hate it, and I'm so sorry. I can't do it. I tried but I love it. I think she's gorgeous, beautiful, right up my street. I did say in my review, I certainly could do without this shade. I'm not going to use it again. It's very crumbly and unsatisfying and just not really the type of shade that I love, but the rest of it, mattes, beautifully blendable and buildable, very, very smooth and light to use. The shimmers are stunning. This is one of my like favorite shimmers from Pat McGrath. I know lots of people are very disappointed that there were no special shades, but we do know that this was actually less money than her motherships with special shades. So I think that's fair that she reduced the price and didn't give us those. I think these are so beautiful. And I think this was probably based on feedback from her customers who don't like those special shades because believe me, they exist. I've seen them out there. Okay, people wanted something more natural and wearable to people who don't love a lot of glitter and shimmer in their shadows. So I think that's probably where she was going with this. I totally understand why people wanted something completely different to what we've got, but a standalone palette that kind of gives people something a bit different as far as the shimmers and finishes, I think it's a beautiful palette, very easy to use, and for some people will be more wearable than some of her other motherships. For me, I just think everything in here is so pretty and it is very wearable. You know, I'll get a lot of use out of this, which is what I want for my money. You know, I mean, you can't tell me these aren't stunning shadows, can you? Maybe you can. Another eyeshadow palette, this time from Natasha Denona, it's the Mini Starlet. You may have forgotten about this eyeshadow palette, and I understand why, because of the palette we're about to talk about in a moment, came along and just made this one look really unexciting. And it's true. 
But I will say, I feel like mini starlet is a really good lesson for us all when we get carried away and something new comes out and we all buy it because there is always something more exciting or just as exciting or more for us right around the corner. And I think that's a great reminder that this came out. And I mean, for me in my collection, was it that exciting? Certainly not. Was it something I didn't have? No but I purchased it for review purposes. I think it will be good to travel with. I like the shadows in here. Everything performs beautifully and works together very nicely, but will I get a lot of use out of it in my collection? No, and did it sort of completely fly out the window the moment that uh, this bad boy came along? Yes. Yes, it did. So this, of course, is the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. This is the palette I'm wearing today. Oh, a moment of silence. I mean, if you are a nude, neutral, soft, glam, basic girl like me, all of our dreams just came true, didn't they? It's just, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Natasha Denona is the queen of colour stories and I feel like the last few palettes she's had, the colour story has been phenomenal, but it's been like a nine out of 10 for some reason. Something was missing, whether it was a really over the top shimmer or a richer shade to smoke looks out. I feel like our complaints over the last few Natasha palettes have been, oh, it's almost perfect. I wish it just had that thing. This one is a 10 out of 10, perfect. It has everything. It has the perfect number of transitional shades, the perfect number of mattes to shimmers. It's got a range of impact when it comes to the shimmers. So some that are quieter and softer, some that give us sparkle, some that give us wet look finish, some that give us all of the glitter, some that are a bit smoother and less impactful. It's got everything and more that I could dream of. I love that she put this fair shade in here so I can do an all matte sort of cut crease type of look, uh, like very no makeup makeup look is also really achievable in here. I like that we've got sort of a pretty much totally neutral palette. It's not extremely cool, but it's not a neutral palette that in fact is heavily warm. You know, there are a couple of warmer shades, obviously with wit and maybe vague, but they are overall, this is pretty much a neutral, 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 straight down the line palette, which I love. I just think it's so pretty, so beautiful. The formulas are stunning. I think she's perfect, perfect for me. I think it might be my favorite ever Natasha Denona palette. I do like this slightly different packaging that she's been doing the last few of these midi palettes as well. It's just, it's going to be one of my most used eyeshadow palettes, which is right up my street. I just love makeup that we're really gonna get a lot of use and a lot of love out of. That's what I like to see. Okay, next up, let's talk about this Shiseido Revitalescence Skin Glow Foundation. People seem to think that this wasn't available, but it is available. I, I've got it, I bought it myself. It's available in the US and in the UK now. I have been trying this a lot. I've been wearing this a lot and really trying to get to the heart of the matter with this foundation. This I don't think is going to be a top drawer foundation. I don't think it's my favorite Shiseido foundation. I still prefer the Radiant Lifting and I think I prefer the Synchro Skin Self Refreshing as well. This one is a really nice foundation. I've had no issues as such with it. I just, it's a serum type foundation. It's very thin and I just can't quite get to the level of coverage that I like personally for like most days. You know, I'm either gonna use a skin tint or something very minimal, or I want a pretty solid medium coverage. This one is definitely a light to light, scraping in at the lighter end of medium coverage for me. And it's just that, that I, I just want a little hair more coverage. It has a beautiful finish, a really nice luminous glow to the skin. I think it wears really nicely and it feels very light and hydrating. So a lot of really good stuff about it. But I, for me personally, my preference, I wish it had just a hair more coverage to it because I do still see a lot of like my discoloration and redness showing through and it just makes me feel a little like I want a touch more to my coverage but a really nice foundation one that I've enjoyed wearing quite a bit I also think it's an interesting one because when I first put it on I'm like hmm and then 
like an hour or two later, it's suddenly like it, it improves once it's sort of really dried down and settled into the skin. It looks even more beautiful than it did when you first applied it. It has a very beautiful finish. I just, for me to be my favorite Shiseido foundation, I just wish it had slightly more coverage like the Radiant Lifting one does. So that remains my favorite, but this is a really nice foundation. And if you want a little more of a lighter coverage, a more natural coverage than the Radiant Lifting, then you will probably prefer this one. A really nice foundation, lots going for it, but it's not gonna be a top five because I just need, I need a little more. You know? Next up, let's talk about this Gucci concealer. My review went up on Friday, I think, but I have had this for a couple of weeks now. It just got pushed back because of the hourglass week that I got sucked into on my channel. This is such a nice concealer. I absolutely love it. It's really light and weightless under the eye, very smooth and flawless. It's got sort of a medium to full coverage. I, in order to cover my dark, under my eyes the discoloration that I have there I need to like build it up and I've also recently been like sort of baking it as well to completely like perfect that area which works so it's slightly lacking in the coverage area for me and what I like but it's so flattering smooth very perfecting got that sort of blurred look doesn't crease wears really nicely it's an excellent concealer i love this flowery packaging very very pretty really pleasantly surprised i have been using this a lot and with good reason i really like it i don't think it's going to topple my huda my pat mcgrath my dior just because i want a little more coverage but who knows you know it takes me a long time to make those decisions and at this moment i'm thinking it's probably going to be like a fourth place concealer maybe very very nice very very good concealer if you don't have as much to cover in your under eye area it could be your holy grail it's very mature skin friendly great concealer let's talk about this chanel blush this is the what she called beige a coral you know this beautiful pretty embossed little number she's glorious to look at i do think the blush itself is a nice very natural peachy blush i don't think it's going to wow me it's you know a, a very sort of average shade finish there's nothing super wow about it i think it's one that you could easily pass on and have no regrets because if you have a lot of these sort of peachy corally type of blushes this one is not going to look any different on the skin i think it's a pretty blush i will use it for me you know i love a glowy blush i need some kind of luminosity sheen to really head over heels it for a blush this one for me it's kind of a satin there's a little bit of luminosity i like the amount of pigmentation i was worried that this was going to be like pesh rose where it just wasn't going to show up on me but it does i think it suits my skin tone really nicely it's got a nice amount of pigment but i think you can do without it is what i'm saying it doesn't wow me it's not like run out and buy this it's life-changing it's different to all the other blushes you own it's another beautiful lovely nice blush but it doesn't like super stand out to me is what i'm saying but speaking of blushes that stand out to me and give me the glorious luminous lusciousness that i desire for my cheeky doodles these new rms blush shades now i have always loved rms blushes i've always loved them i own many they are delightful they are one of my favorite formulas and then just as you think you know a brand and you've got you know their blushes you know which shades they have they bring out my two favorite ever shades from the brand bohemian girl and crystal slipper literally every time i talk about this blush i want to say diamond slipper it's crystal slipper get it through your head lady these are my two <sighs> these are my two favorite ever blushes from the brand and crystal slipper is literally i think I don't, I don't know if I could say it's my number one favourite blush. I don't know that I'll ever be able to tell you what my favourite number one ever blush is. That's too hard to decide. But she's 100% top three, I'm going to say. Glorious. It is the blush I have on today. Just the most glorious glow and luminosity without being glittery, without 
accentuating texture. It's the most lovely, healthy, glow, luminous, it's just delightful. And Bohemian Girl, also right up my street. If I want something a bit more sort of spring summery, a bit more color, a bit more of a flush to the cheeks, it's stunning. But this is just what I look for in a blush, this sort of neutral tone, slightly a little bit rosy maybe, just stunning. But the finish of these blushes is right up my street and these shades, they've absolutely smashed them out the park. And I like that both of these were a little lighter as well because I think a lot of their initial shades for their blush collection were really rich and for lots of people intimidating if you had a more light to like medium skin tone and you're not a super big blush girl like me, I will be happy walking around with a very flushed appearance. But some people want a barely there blush and they didn't have a lot of shades that were going to deliver that on lighter skin tones. So I'm really happy that we've got kind of shade extensions that offer us something different to the shades that we originally had. They're just stunning. Those blushes are delightful and I can't wait to get my mitts on the highlighter. <laughs> be still my beating heart. Next up, let's talk about this open sesame. Let's talk about this Armani highlighter. This is the Luminous Silk Glow Highlighter. And if that name does not speak to your soul, I don't know that we can be friends. All of those words, oh, yes please, sucked me right into thinking, oh, this could be the highlighter for me. And I know we're all hearing that the Chanel highlighters that we've all been waiting months for aren't coming to the UK or the US. I find it hard to believe. I know that people are saying that, but I have heard that before, specifically when it comes to Chanel products, and then they just somehow always show up online anyway. I find it really strange. Like it would make sense to me if they had only launched in like Hong Kong or they'd only launched in Asia, and it was maybe an Asian exclusive, then maybe that would make sense to me. But when they're like popping up in other countries, they arrived in Australia. I find it really strange that Australia would get a launch and the US or the UK or Europe wouldn't get it because that just doesn't seem to fit to me in the way that launches typically go, particularly for Chanel. So I highly suspect that they will come online at some point, regardless of what the brand is currently saying, because I've heard them say that before. But we may be waiting an indefinite amount of time to see them here or there or anywhere else. So I heard the words luminous silk glow and I saw this packaging and I thought, I know what I can do while I'm waiting. Now this will be too deep. It's only available in one shade. It comes with a little brush that we won't use, but you know, it's there. Nice big mirror, nice solid compact with the lovely glittery sparkly gold lid there. It is going to be too dark for someone I think with like a fair to light skin tone, but it's perfect for my skin tone. It's the highlighter that I have on today. It's not a love for me, okay? It's okay, it's nice, I can wear it and enjoy it, but it does give me quite a bit of a sort of more visible glittery specks than I would typically prefer when it comes to a highlighter. So I think don't panic if this isn't available to you. Don't freak out if the shade is too deep or too light for you, because it's just not, there's only available in one shade and it does have, you know, a bit of base there. So you will want to, you know, have it in a, in a shade that's close to your skin tone. So if it's too light or it's too deep, don't worry. It's not the greatest highlighter we've ever seen on this earth. It's okay, it's nice. It does have some more visible, visible specks of glitter and shimmer that I don't love on the skin. And it's not wowing me, it's not standing out, it's gone straight into my highlighter drawer that is not the one I reach for the most. So yeah, it was okay. I don't think it's worth the money. I don't think anyone should be devastated that the color won't work for them because it's just not that special. Next up, Let's talk about these Dior lipsticks. These are the Rouge Dior Forever Liquid Lacquers. I'm wearing shade 200 today, which may lure you into a false sense of security that I love them. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've tried so hard to love these. I've tried so hard, okay? I keep trying to gaslight myself into believing 
that I'm wrong about them, that I, I do in fact like them and that I'm imagining what's going on because I love nine out of 10 things about them, okay? They wear incredibly well. They wear so well through three course meals and coffees and wine and everything, an entire day, still there, still shiny. No transfer for such a shiny lipstick. Magic, amazing, love it. I like the shades, I love this shade especially. I love the packaging and I love literally every Dior lipstick, I think they nail their formulas. Their bullet mattes are amazing, so clever. You know how much I love the Dior Addict Hydrating Shiny Lipsticks. Their classic liquid matte lipsticks are some of my favorites ever. I thought this was the answer to all of my prayers, but for one thing, it's the stickiness. I can't do it. I've been talking obviously for like 40 minutes now while I make this video and already I'm thinking, oh, it's not doing it, but it's because I'm non-stop talking. The second I stop talking, my lips are sticking together and I can't stand it. And I've seen so many people just loving these and not even mentioning the stickiness. So obviously this is like a me thing, not just me though, I've seen a lot of other people say they get it and they don't like it either. But for a lot of people, I think it's just not going to bother them. For me, it just means I, I'm not going to wear these. I'm not going to use them. Why would I? I have a lot of the Chanel Dublatinu that don't do that. You can't feel them on your lips. They don't stick your lips together. It's just, I can't stand it. I was driving in to go shopping the other week and I spent the entire car journey just prizing my lips apart and I can't stay. It's so annoying to me. It bothers me so much. And I know that's a personal thing. Some people won't even notice it. Some people won't care whatsoever, but I care. Apparently I care about it. I, I don't like that. I can't stand it. The Chanel ones don't do it. So therefore I'm just not going to use these anymore. I'll just stick to my Chanel ones. It's such a shame because it's so close to perfection. And I really wanted them to be perfect, but I can't, I just want my lips to be free, freely moving, okay? I don't like the sticky gluey effect, it's not for me. Okay, and finally, let's talk about these Hourglass palettes, the Jellyfish and the Snake. These are the two palettes that I picked up. I obviously haven't had these very long. I think I've only had them a week now. And so, you know, the things that I said in my review and all of my feelings and thoughts still pretty much stand. This one I like, I used the bronzer today and that was it. I don't like this one as much as Snake because I can't really use these powders is that they're too light and bright for me. Also, overall, this palette is definitely more matte and natural finish-wise than these hourglass palettes typically run or hourglass powders typically run. So it's not going to be my favorite because I want all of the glow, but it's a nice palette. I think all of the formulas in here are very nice. It doesn't quite work for me right now because this highlighter is very light. As I said in my review, it was really sort of leaving a cast on my skin tone because it, it is quite light for me. But I think in winter, I will get a lot more use and enjoyment out of this just when my skin tone is that much lighter. I think it's a really nice palette. And if you have a fair to like medium skin tone, I think it's beautiful, especially if you wanted something a little less glowy than these palettes typically are. The Snake palette, I absolutely love. I've used this several times now and I really enjoy it. All of the shades in here are so beautiful. I really love that this bronzer is gorgeously luminous and a little less warm than Hourglass bronzers typically run. I love that we've only got the one of the finishing powders in here because I don't really use them, but I do actually like this shade. It's the, the best shade that I've tried for my skin tone. All of the blush options I am obsessed with. The one thing I wish I could change about this palette is the highlighter. It's just, it's very intense and I wish it was less intense. It's very metallic, even if you use it with, you know, a very light hand and really blend it into the skin, it's really quite intense and metallic. And it's just not, that's just not my preference for highlighter. I wish, I think it was the Sculpture palette, was it? That they had that really stunning, 
highlight that was really much more subtle than typically they are. I wish they didn't put the metallic highlight formula in these palettes so often. I wish they'd do a more sort of ambient lighting glow highlighter in here, but otherwise, I mean, that's just a personal thing. This palette is perfect. I love that we've got bronzer, one finishing powder, multiple blushes to choose from with different finishes and intensities, and one highlighter. All of the shades are beautiful, and I've loved using it. I do think Tiger is probably going to still stay in my number one spot because Tiger has a more subtle highlight. It has like one sort of subtle highlight and one more metallic intense highlight. So for that reason, that just slightly edges it for me because the highlight is just a bit more for me. And it also, because I use the finishing powder in Tiger as bronzer, it doesn't have a finishing powder, which is great for me because I don't really use it. So I think Tiger is still my number one of these Hourglass Ambient Lighting edits, but Snake is definitely a close second. I will say I don't really love this package I know people go nuts for it, but I personally would prefer like the plain gold or silver. That's just me. I told you. I've warned you. I'm boring. Okay, and there you have it. That is all of my updates, my faves, my fails for the month of August. Please let me know what your favourite product is that you tried in the month of August in the comment section down below. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.